First tonight, more on the grilling. Canada's grocery store CEOs got in Ottawa, including from one federal leader. Normally, party leaders aren't present at parliamentary committees. However, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh made an exception, zeroing in on Loblaw's profits and forcing CEO Galen Weston to defend his company's business practices. How much profit is too much profit? We're a big company and the numbers are very large, uh, but it still translates right down to the bottom line at $1 per $25 of groceries. Does we are actively losing money on core commodities, um, you know, milk, vegetable oil, butter, uh, certain cheeses, um, and all kinds of items in every single, every, every day of the week. So we are working hard on behalf of Canadians. You, you've still not been able to answer this basic question. Then when a family that's struggling right now looks at your profit, you know, how much profit is too much profit? How much is enough? Like, you're making more than you've ever made ever, ever. And you're not, you've not contradicted that point because we know it's true. Reasonable profitability is, uh, is an important part of operating a successful business. Um, I think at a dollar out of $25 of sales, that's reasonable profitability. He is a member of one of the richest families in the country. CBC Sarah Galashin was listening in. Sarah, the grocery giants were in the hot seat for more than two hours today. Mm -hmm. What did we learn? Uh, we listen, we got their take on the rising uh, uh, price of food from the people who are essentially selling the food. Uh, they are seeing profits. They insist that that's not the result of uh, gouging or greed and that it's not something that is out of step from what uh, should be considered normal. Loblaw CEO Galen Weston, you heard from him there, he's attributing the success to things like efficiencies, success in certain categories like cosmetics and, and cough and cold, and as well driving home that, uh, repeating the, that analogy of the $1 per uh, $25 basket of groceries. What he's saying here is that it, uh, for a $25 basket of groceries, the grocery giant's seen only a dollar of that being profit. You take away the profit, the groceries are still costing the consumer $24. And while in the last 18 months, uh, he says, the same amount of food is costing the consumer just under $4 more, the profit seen by the grocery uh, chains is only really uh, 13 cents. So that it's not going Going up uh, substantially, though you you know multiply 13 cents by enough times, and it, it certainly can add up, as we've seen. You know, look at the official numbers from Stats Can, um, and they do show the price of food from grocery stores up by 11 percent to January, while in other areas inflation has slowed to 5.9 percent. The CEO of Empire, which is uh, the company that owns a number of chains like Sobeys, offered a, a number of suggestions to the government. Uh, among them. Um, reducing congestion at ports, investing in greenhouse farming in order to keep food supply close, doing what the government can do to increase the value of the Canadian dollar, suggesting that all of those are things the government can do to try and address the rising cost of food. Dwight? I mean, there was talk about the need for a code of conduct for grocers. Are the CEOs receptive to that idea? <laughs> That was that, that that came up a number of times mm -hmm. at these hearings, and the, the calls for a grocery code of conduct. We've been hearing those, uh, you know, calls coming even louder, uh, even as, as even back in the fall. Um, this would be an enforceable code of conduct, is what we're talking about, one that would protect consumers, but also importantly, suppliers. Suppliers like uh, dairy producers have accused the large retailers of charging fees, taking deductions off of payments, and thereby making the production of you know, dairy products more expensive, and that then gets passed on to the consumer. What we heard from uh, the these CEOs who were before the parliamentarians uh, is that, um, they, well, they're more or less supportive. But let me play what they said. The code of conduct um, will can be a very positive, uh, you know, part of uh, of the industry, but it has to be um, developed in a in a fair and uh, and balanced way. Um, and we're actively contributing to the conversations that are, uh, you know, hopefully going to going to get us there. I think unless we get everyone signed up, it'll be a farce. And I think we can get everyone signed up, and I think we need the, the help of the government to be able to do so. That last uh, comment there, that's uh, Michael Medlin. He is the CEO of Empire, and Empire is, as I say, the company uh, that runs a number of chains, including Sobeys. He's quite in support uh, of a code of conduct, but as you heard him say there, it's going to take everyone being a part of it. And uh, it really spoke to Dwight, who wasn't in the room today. Uh, there are American uh, retail giants that operate in Canada's grocery space, uh, namely Walmart and, and Costco were, were brought up, and the fact that they were absent and not compelled to answer questions that was certainly of note. Yeah, they're competing in the same marketplace. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah.
For more on this and what we learned at today's testimony, we've reached Colleen Wiseman. She is the Academic Director and Manager at UBC's Master of Food and Resources Economics Program. She joins us from Vancouver tonight. So hi, Colleen. Thanks for being with us. You know, we finally heard from the big grocers today. What stood out for you in their testimony? Well, I think that what we were all looking for was the granular of this sort of profit margin mm -hmm. or this, you know, dollar per revenues. Because although this is public information, you know, these are public companies, what we've been seeing so far is profit margin based on the entire uh, range of products that they sell. So everything from pharmacy to housewares to clothing, you know, all the wide range. And, and those are the profit margins that we've been tracking, higher, increasing, all those things. But what we really wanted was we wanted from here to say, all of that is important, but let's zero in on one particular category, which is looking at groceries, which of course is what we're looking at for food security issues. Now, the number that was tossed around was this dollar to $25. And of course, that's a 4% margin, which honestly is probably kind of the historical realm of what groceries have been in that sort of three to seven or 8% in groceries. That's what the margin usually is played in there. So that's what we were looking for is the granular associated with it. Now. Uh, that we'll get more details as you know more of this is infor information is released, but that's what we wanted, and that's the number we've got so far. That's that 24 and 25. So you think we did get a better understanding of why food costs were so much higher this past year in today's hearings with that information? Well, I think that's that's two different questions. Why are food prices higher? That's 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 not a a Loblaws or a Canadian or a regional issue, that's a global issue, right? We have to understand that these are supply chains that are across not just Canada, but the world, right? I mean, US, the UK, their prices are going up as well, and they're going up more than in Canada associated with it. So these are supply chains, these are global issues that are, are making, from both the supply side and the demand side, that are making these prices increase, just like it's not a food issue, it's everything is going up, right? We know that. Yes. Computers are going up, clothing are going up. So did we get the answer? What well, it's the answer that we got was what is the margin? And yes. that will allow us a comparison. But I mean, that's just one number, one out of 25. Oh. What would be good is to say across, right? To say, so that's your grocery margin. If that is the case, then that's, that's, that's not uh, high profits associated with that's that's consistent profits. So you see the three CEOs, they insisted, like you're saying here, that they're not the cause of rising food prices. And they talk about these global f factors that's affecting everyone. But I mean, how much can they actually control when it does come to food prices then? Because they're saying that they have no control. Well, I mean, it's, it's just in most countries, because we're globally trading, right? Mm -hmm. So we're getting bananas, we're getting, you know, food products made across the world, and whether it's processed associated with it, they are buying on that global market. They're buying the same as Walmart is, they're buying the same as, you know, Kroger is in the U.S., and they're buying into that, of that product, and then they place their margin on there. So that's what we're looking for. That's the magic number we're looking for. If I'm buying it, you know, $20, am I putting it up, you know, 20% or am I putting up 40%? What we're doing is we're saying, what are you, the question is, what are you increasing it for you and I as the retail, in terms of retail to consumer level? Because they're really buying on this global market. So yep. do they control it? Not from the wholesaler, not to the, you know, in terms of processing, not in terms of manufacturing, not all the way back to producers. So they're accepting what most people are, but what we're asking is, what are you putting on top of that? I guess the difficulty for consumers is, you know, when they see these high prices and they say, well, it's not the food prices that's driving our profits, but in the end, you are still making record profits when people are suffering. And, you know, some people have mentioned the possibility of a grocery code of conduct. What do you think of that idea? Okay, so I, I, I'll address two of those really quickly. Okay, please. Um, We're running out of time, but making, I do want you to address them. Yeah, okay. Re, re, in terms of record profits, if this one out of 25 is really defined and is really grocery basis, I don't know if that's record, that's just more consistent. 
They have made record profits overall because of the type of products they're selling and the pandemic and many issues. Yeah. Code of conduct, yeah. I mean, code of conduct is all about sort of transparency level to level, right? All along the supply chain. I think there's some very strong efficiencies, very strong, almost like a blockchain. If you know what each level is getting and even just sort of generally, not very specific company, information is power and if we have this information at each level doesn't matter whether you're small or big if you have that information it gives you more in terms of sort of ability to negotiate and sort of understanding so there is some value in that mm -hmm. but it has to be buy-in right Kathleen, Kayleen rather, Wiseman is the academic director and manager at UBC's Master of Food Resources Economics program. We appreciate your insights tonight, Kayleen. Thank you for joining us.